Hello and thank you for staying with us. This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. We will bring you the biggest updates on the entertainment um, sector. My name is Elsie Godwin and I've got my co-anchors with me, Benny Ark and Nimi Dekombi. Hey guys. Hi Elsie. Hi Nimi. How are you doing? How is social distancing going? Practicing it as much as I can and we got yeah. a face mask on We can see. We got to breathe easy. <laughs> We got to breathe easy, baby. We oh, breathe. goodness. Don't want to infect no one. No one should but infect But you know you're me, supposed man. to use the face mask if you are infected. Not necessarily. Mm. It's just a precautionary measure right here. Mm. When I get to interact with you all every now and then, and so we're talking each other's face. Mm. And you, have you done your test yet? I'm not pretty sure. Have so, you done your test yet? No. So that's why I'm protecting myself and okay. protecting other people around me. Mm. Hi, Elsa. How you doing? I'm great. You're I'm good. Beautiful. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, all the politicians testing positive should be taken to the poor health centers they initially left for the masses. Um, either we like it or not, the COVID-19 will have a positive impact on the Nigeria system of government, particularly the health se sector. And this is coming from AY, the comedian. I mean, kudos to AY. I agree so much with the latter part of his, of his text. You know, I'm hoping that is the hope, that is the, the prayer that at the end of the day, after all of this blows over, um, we will see a better health sector. They will start focusing on improving mm -hmm. our health system because it so is too. messed up. You know, so it feels so good right now knowing that they're, they're trapped in it and they can't travel out. Mm. So if, because if, if there was all the time um, and they could travel out, we wouldn't even hear of them having this thing. Yeah. All right, they would travel out secretly, go get themselves treated and come back home like nothing ever happened. But unfortunately, you got to declare yourself positive if you are. And with the ban on international travels, you can't go out. Um, they should take them to those dilapidated hospitals we have in there Guam, is, Malada, There is and, a you know. perfect video for this mm. story. Okay. And before we get your take, Nimi, let's have a look. Yeah, what up, people? They call me Road Boy. Shout out to Plantation Boys for this song, man. You know why? It's all about them virus and dedicated to the government. Are you ready? Let's go. If life was a thing that the money could buy, the bitch would be living and they would die. A living dog is better than a dead liar. They know they judge your life for a life and life. If life was a thing that the money could buy, the bitch would be living and they would die. A living dog is better than a dead liar. Thank God in touch your life. They send me for a good, good hospital. For I know the year, for I don't the fear. We want to know, eh? For I don't the see, as the team they be. You know, if you travel again, they go to hospital abroad, eh? So now we all go there for this place. We we'll suffer for this. <laughs> I don't know why that didn't get to the end, but his laughter at the end is the very yeah. interesting part. You know, it's the truth. I mean, it's, it's all up in our face. We all know how, how messed up our, our public health systems are. You know, I mean, there was a period I was fortunate to go to a general hospital with a friend because he couldn't afford um, the private hospital bill for, it, for his kid. And just the entrance of that hospital, I can't mention the name now just for the sakes of um, protecting that hospital. I'm like, dude. This is more like where you come to contact sicknesses and diseases. Why would you want to bring your child to this kind of place? He said he doesn't have the phone. Even the, even the public hospitals are in a state of mess. You know, so we're hoping, we're just hoping, I don't want to use the word praying, that they will do, they will do good by themselves. After this. After this is all said and done. Yeah. So I wanted to say that um, I'm glad that there are celebrities that are coming out to actually say these things because there have been normal random people who have been saying this on social media. They've been saying that, oh, they're glad that uh, politicians or the political get elite to are stuck been you know, with us. Because you look at other times when maybe we have an epidemic or something, it feels like they, they never ever say anything because they have options. Most of them have the ability to travel abroad for better health care while leaving the rest of us poor masses to manage the little health care that we have here. So when it comes to the coronavirus, they don't have an option because the countries that they would travel to are high-risk countries and they've shut down their economies. So you are stuck here in Nigeria They're even to manage their awesome that health care. <laughs> or health care for their own yeah, people. And I also wanted to say that, that it, it's not even a, a, a even, no matter who you are, no matter your power, whatever it is, it's not a situation where you can like say, oh, 
UK, please accept me. Because even in the UK, even they are they want struggling to, they can't help to you. have enough health care for their... And these are, com, um, these are countries that have good health care systems already. Not talk of Nigeria, where we have been crying since that. So do something about our health care system. I was listening, uh, for New York right now, they are trying to... They, they're trying to reduce the curve in two ways. So reduce the number of people that are coming into the, um, the hospital. Not even the country. The hospitals are filled up. There, yeah, there are no true. beds. So they want to reduce that and also at the same time they're trying to build more hospitals. So it's it's a serious case right yeah. now. So nobody can help you even if they want to. Yeah, and I wonder, I hope, like he said, that after this is all over, I hope this will be like a waking, it will wake our politicians up to realize that in the case of something like this happening again, we are all stuck in this. We are stuck in this country. So it's better for you to build your country instead of, you know, leaving your own bed on lead and going up and down to other countries. So I'm glad. I feel like it will be a teaching, a moment of, you know, teaching, lesson to them. I don't know. Okay. Let, me, let me say, like the, the typical religious Nigerian mm -hmm. would say, God forbid. God forbid what? You know, that um, what is happening in Europe right now, what happened in China, ah. comes to us. I mean, because well, the cases are, are increasing right well. now. The, the number, the, we have 51 reported cases, isn't yeah. it? Now, imagine it escalates. It, it goes in, you know, in some exponential progression. I hope not. I feel I mean, like it we might don't have. have we because don't the 51 have, is yeah. out of um, 150 something tested cases. Yeah. No, so well, we've not we tested have, a lot of people. We've tested kids, kids now. Well, they just, they just arrived. Now. As exactly. this morning, we start we know, testing yeah. people. Uh, we're still wondering why it's left Lagos to Abuja. Abuja but that's because we have a conversation a in Lagos. for another day. And um, let's just see what will happen. But I'm, I'm hoping, I, I kind of believe that it's not going to be that serious. I think here. it might be. Yeah. Okay, moving on while you are being negative. Um, dancer, Kafi blast market traders using coronavirus to inflate prices of food stuff. She said, and I quote, you people already make enough profit on goods. This is not just an economic let me make profit situation. This is a we all can die situation. When you have all the money, I want you to chop it in heaven because you will die with it. God is willing to help us when we help one another. We are the ones in this country causing problems for ourselves. The profit you're adding more is actually making someone else die because they cannot afford to buy food items. You're worse than the government, end of quote. Yeah. Um, quite, quite um, rightly said by Kathy. I don't know if there are extant laws or act in the constitution that, that, um, that punishes such when there's a global pandemic like we're experiencing right now, people take the opportunity to exploit people. There's meant to be some punishment for it. You know, because it is not a time for you to, to hike your prices. It's a time for you to think human and know that, okay, people are in need of this thing as much as possible, make it available to them at the cheapest cost possible. But we see the different is the case in Nigeria. At every if at celebrations we, we take advantage of every every festivity to increase price and exploit one another. And then again, in debt, in sickness and death. You're still hiking the prices of things. Then I begin to wonder, where, where's our compass of morality? What is it? What is it anchored upon? Mm. All right. In celebrations, I can understand if people have so much money to spend. But this is a case of people are falling sick, people are dying, and you still want to hike the price of hand sanitizers from 400 naira to over, I mean, more than 100 percent the price. Such people should be found out, and they should be prosecuted. If possible, they should be jailed. Yeah. Have their have their shop wherever it is shut down and lock them up for a time being. Okay, well, I wanted to say that um, I agree with what she said, but this is not just restricted to Nigeria alone, because with the rise of the coronavirus in other countries... Trust me, other countries have control over it. Yeah, they have They will control, have control over regulations. Greed, you know. greed is not something that is restricted to a particular set of people. Even in these countries, there have been people who took advantage of the crisis and increased their prices. They called them out, and then their government now put you know, sanctions in place the to restrict loss, that. Yes. So we hope that that would be applicable to Nigeria because we have seen a surge in prices of different goods that are supposed to be readily available to people. And I don't really understand the sense in that because it doesn't when, you the hike, crew, the crew when you is hike falling. the price of some of the things are essential. What you are doing is you are going to bring the virus to your doorstep. Because when people cannot afford to buy these things, when people cannot afford to get things to protect themselves, the virus is going to spread. And when the virus spreads, it is going to come to your doorstep. No, for me, so I don't know. understand how people think that, oh, I must make profit in this kind of situation. For me, yeah, I, don't I want get to play it. the devil's advocate. Mm. So um, this is Nigeria. I like that you said in some, in Sena climes, they have... Um, things put in place to make sure if you are caught, then you're sanctioned in a certain way. But yeah. I think the people she's talking about are petty food, not even sanitizers right now. She's talking of food petty traders. and petty, petty traders. traders. And you would not blame these people if they think that right now, 
is the time for me to make all this money so that I can be able to take care of myself. I'm not saying it is, it is right. I'm just saying you can as well know where they are coming from because they want to try as much as possible as well to stock up because these countries you are mentioning are getting handouts. How much did we say before we come on air that Canada is giving Canada is the giving, citizens? Is giving their citizens Amer for US America, they are already planning five. on what to do, you know. Yeah. But here, it is all man for himself. Atiku is still telling the, 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 the government to give us 10,000 10, naira, right? Fine, hopefully that 10,000 naira will come up. Or... But no. For, for this the, period, period, whatever I, I don't know for how the long period. the period is going to be. So let's just look at our own situation. I'm not saying it is right for yeah. any reason. I mean, it's affecting myself. I had to shop, and it became double. Like uh, then, I be I start wondering what people with families and children that they have to cater um, to, how they are surviving, and how much they are spending. Right? Because I knew how much I spent. So yes, I am being affected, but at the same time, I'm still looking at them. I'm saying yes, maybe from their own myopic understanding, they just want to be able to gather enough, make enough, and get into their place to be able to survive yeah. i don't know but i, mean, that's I, I like the fact i like the yeah, fact you use the word myopic because if we come to the economics of it right yeah. now mm -hmm. globally nothing is meant to be expensive yeah. i mean you, you're not you, you didn't you, it didn't cost you so much to purchase those things the crude the price of crude is is falling and she I said mean, something she said drastically you're already in, making in so market, much gains you know. because food yes. stuffs in lagos state especially which is where she is are making this video from is highly expensive yeah. so the product you're getting or the goods you're getting for it's say one thousand naira if you leave Lagos State just to the next neighboring states, you could get it for 200 naira and 500 naira. Do you understand? So no they're already making massive um, There's no um, hiking gains, price. There's you know? no so shortage there's no of fuel. Really. And so this, it's not justified for mm -hmm. whatever reason they yeah. might be having right now. So like you rightly say, it's just pure um, illiteracy in the economics of the times we're yeah. in. Nothing at this point in time is actually expensive. And also because at the end of the day, like she said, everybody's trying to hustle for their own self in case oh, of just, an Nigerians inevitable just, lockdown. Just love to exploit most of these families well, cannot actually survive without us. Are you using in case an inevitable I mean, statement? I don't understand. We love to exploit one another. We're so good at it. <laughs> All right, let's go for a quick break. When we return, there will be more to discuss. Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I see them every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Ali Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, Plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to die, everybody feeling all right. Still make music and people are still buying. Sometimes they look myself minimal. Are you? music is for mature-minded people. That got DM sometimes from Malawi. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. Report says Bill Cosby's lawyer are considering filing a motion asking for his release from prison amid the coronavirus pandemic. Cosby spokesman told Page Six that more than one prison officer of the Correctional Center where um, Cosby is being held has tested um, positive for COVID-19. They are currently exploring all legal options. Yeah. I feel, so I feel pity, I feel sad for Bill Cosby at this moment, you know, but at the end of the day... Um, I, feel for, I feel sad for everybody, uh, including everyone in yeah, the community. Everybody, everybody yeah. that yeah. might okay, get infected. How is it different? It's, listen to me, my heart goes, he's an elderly I think person. we should stop the whole elderly and younger thing I, now because even just, someone elderly, young is dying of um, he doesn't necessarily he's not he's not necessarily in the best of health condition given oh. his age again let's remember that i mean and so um he, he's prone he's prone to be affected and even possibly die from this so whatever shelter whatever whatever um restriction they can place already on his jail term and his parole they should grant it to him well like maybe the have said, to say he doesn't that, have he can't no. move around maybe I mean, we should say he's not gonna run all the elderly people in, in the prison yeah should, should be, be escorted out, out. Because I don't even feel any form index, of remorse no, for I do, Bill Cosby. I do feel, I do feel I for him because again, I feel, I feel, I feel for um, all I, the elderly, I feel for people, the elderly people in the correctional center. Yes, they exactly. should take care of them and make sure they do not contract but the virus. Cosby, I I feel, it's that care. simple. I feel, can I, can I, uh, it's all right, I mean, it's okay for us to disagree. <laughs> but can I just say my mind? I mean, I feel for Bill Cosby because already the, the, the charges against him is serving a jail term already. I mean, hey, his health is deteriorating. Whether we like it or not, his case is different. 
different from every other person. I'm not saying they shouldn't pay attention to those people. I'm sorry, he's a celebrity. Oh, really? Oh, yes. I mean, he's. you can't take that from like him. The media will call and it trust me, there's the spotlight, yes, there's spotlight on him than any other elderly person in prison. Which is, just like I right get now, what you're saying. Just like right now, there are Benny. other normal people who have been infected with COVID-19, mm -hmm. but the very minute Abba Kiari, the COS to the president, got it, it was news. Benny, I, I hear you. And I get and so what he's you're more saying. privileged than but every I'm, other person I'm else taking right it now. from, um, I don't know if anyone has been able to see um, um, Cardi B's video. I'm taking yes. it from that angle to say this is not about saving celebrities or saving the politicians or saving all lives matter. matter. I agree. So, at this wait, point in time. Based, no, hold on, let me finish. Based on the important issues that his legal teams has raised, we are not throwing that away to say yeah. it you. doesn't make sense. We are much. saying that all elderly human beings in prison because they're high risk should be taken care of. It's not just about Bill Cosby. That's yes. what we are saying. That's what My I'm point saying. is, in the light of all um, the, the defenses, the lawyers, his lawyers put forward, I feel it should be considered. That's what I'm saying. I'm not Basically, saying other people don't me, matter. I, mean, I feel no remorse for Bill Cosby. That's fine. But based on, You're what, saddest. <laughs> based on what his lawyers have said, they make sense. Because at the end of the day, the most important thing is trying to curb this virus. We are mm -hmm. not trying to... The most important thing is to contain the virus. So mm -hmm. if somebody in the prison facility already contracted the virus, it makes sense mm -hmm. to say that, okay, there are some people who are high risk, we need to move them out. Not just if they are Bill Cosby, which is what we have been trying to say yeah, since. Basically. It should not matter. It should not be a, oh, only Bill Cosby it should going take to be escorted the out of, the, of the prison. It should be a, okay, or elderly people in the prison, we are going to move you to this particular place. Because what they were saying is they want to move him to his house for house arrest. And, I'm like, and there's nothing wrong with that i would prefer if they move him for the safety of other people also there's nothing wrong with that let, let, other, people, let other people make the plea for all the other elderly, elderly people in the prison wow. no, that, this, that, this that, is that, the exactly you're being selfish and, and you're just you're just worrying other people and then once again you're you are making some people's lives matter hold than up other hold people's. up now who is the subject matter here the elderly people in prison bill cosby no and so, it's not by the fact of Bill Cosby, the by, by, by extension, coronavirus by, by, extension you. by extension, you can say, okay, you know, let's extend to other elderly people. Extend, in the, in the really, but, but Benny, yes, extend. Six. It should, it, it should, it should not be a by. Oh, how would you feel, extend. Benny? Hold on. How would you feel if these are our testing kids now, they've carried to Abuja? If they bring it back to Lagos and they say, everybody should get tested, mm -hmm. right? And then they come back and say, you know what? Um... You guys. Normal people you shouldn't you be tested. Let's just guys, test the people test in the house of reps. Let's you are, you you have guys, it guys, doesn't make you any are, sense. You're negating the fact that That's, a legal team are the one asking for this. The other His people, do they are, need, no, hold up, hold We're not saying that should not be that. Let's, 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 let's have a rational yes, argument here. I mean, no, are simple. their legal team making a case for them to be released? Oh, are you so aware because, of it? Oh, so because they, because they team, cannot afford the legal, legal, right? legal team to fight for who them, told you, their lives Who told you that? Matter. Every American has So how are you sure? How are you sure their legal teams are not fighting? Because that's because it's Bill Cosby, like you said. That's why we know. No, the subject matter is COVID-19. I'm sorry, I'm focused on Bill Cosby. Because of coronavirus, that's the reason why they're even raising this in the first place. Be the the, the focus life. is because we are in Nigeria, it is yes. COVID one night. Yes. <laughs> Moving on, there is a growing <laughs> trend among Nigerian women these days. They order stew, soup, and jollof they eat at home from vendors. And I mean married women. I know it's tough to manage the home front and work, but to be perpetually ordering food is beyond words. And of course, I can mm. never say that. It's coming from a Twitter user, um, Attender Biggie. They say he's an IT consultant. So, who is he, please? They say he's an IT, he's consultant. an IT consultant. Okay, so, I mean, yeah, aside being an IT consultant, so who is he? He's a man. He's a Twitter user. He's Your in, fellow man. He's <laughs> he, inconsequential. His, his appearance pretty much very inconsequential. And I have problem with this kind of thoughts because this is this kind of thoughts that actually is always adverse against women. If, if a woman decides to order for food for the rest of her life, that is a prerogative. And if the man in her life is okay with it, that is also their prerogative. Let's, let's, let's stop all this defining of roles, you know, because at the end of the day, it comes off chauvinistic. If, if my woman decides to cook for me, great and fine. If she doesn't cook and we can afford to buy food outside, great and fine. It shouldn't be anybody's business. And I'm not going to define her by that role, you know. And so if perpetually she wants to order for soup somewhere and the soup tastes so good, 
By all means, let's eat and there enjoy. There was a response that got even more liked than the post. I hope I can remember how the person said it. But the person said that that it also beats her imagination to yeah. see that you allow your wife go to the market to buy meat. I mean, when you can actually become a hunter, especially married men, yes. why can't you go and hunt this meat for her and bring it home? This oh, is, I, I like this it. Is it's totally exactly wrong. unbelievable. I can't mm. even believe the vendors will take the orders. Don't mind them. My wife knows I don't eat next day stew outside food. She's downstairs in the kitchen pounding yam for my lunch. It's all these soft woke husbands accepting it. I mean, and this is Wally Gates. I mean, of course, I mean, somebody, being sarcastic. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. There's an unending trend amongst Nigerian men. They pay for prostitutes, sleep with their maids, colleagues, and underage girls, and I mean married <laughs> men. This another, is this another, this another aspect Sarkazi. to it. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's okay, just so this come one, up. Even yeah. more scary is the fact that Nigerian men, married men at that, just buy already built houses. They don't build them and anymore. Can you imagine? And when it comes to food, they rather buy meat from the butcher than hunt down a water buffalo for I'm, dinner. I'm pathetic. pathetic. <laughs> You know, so I, I love, love Uda. Uda. I love the so love Uda. Let, let's stop. You say you are mad. Ah, we increase we the level of the madness. madness. And so you know, just don't sit because you can. You have your query keys and you can just type anything. Be, be rational. Think about it. And the domino effect that could that could cost. Mm -hmm. You know. And so we're still trying to protect a situation whereby women feel so marginalized. You know, and they're, they're fighting for their rights, and somebody's on he Twitter. He even tried to say he understand know. that taking mm. care of the home front and the work, but still, he was still he was still trying to justify. And this is the statements. kind of man that will know how to boil water. I'm very you know. very sure, because I don't understand why we are. And again, it still boils down to the fact that cooking is not specified to a particular gender. Mm. It is not. Everybody should, should know, know how to how cook. To yeah. cook. Mm. So I did not really understand because for me, I felt like he made and his in point. One brand, he now in, added, sorry, in one he breath, adds, he's trying to bring down a whole business. Yes. Because this is a business. Because people make people. a lot of money from this cooking soup and selling it to people. Because not everybody. And again, look at this. In fact, I took look it at personal the city because that I we just are bought in. a father sauce in five liter bowl. Oh my God. And you know what? In a, in a light, I'm <laughs> not sorry. Not everybody yeah, has yeah. time to cook every day. I was just going to say that. In a light, I'm the sorry. Time. In the light of the 21st century that we're living mm -hmm. in, a family, mm -hmm. that one, one, one man income bringing into the family doesn't it even It doesn't even apply any anymore. Mm -hmm. Everybody's so working. If I find a woman, if you're a woman who is willing to work and also throw her weight behind you, it's a thing of joy and by every means necessary when I want to eat as long as there's food on my table whether mm. she orders for it and sometimes, or she decides to cook sometimes it. Sometimes if you calculate what it actually takes to make a meal in the house if you trust the sauce you're getting from you realize that it comes cheaper yeah. because they take out their time to leave the city that they call the urban and mega yeah. city that we yeah. live which foodstuffs are actually expensive and go back to the rural places to get their foodstuffs. So they can actually get it cheaper and then make it. And so make it if you want to get what they are cooking for you in the house, this is not even calculating your time, your stress, your everything. You realize that what they're selling to you is actually, actually comes cheaper. It's yeah. economic. You know, like if you, if you take if you take a sample, 10 out of maybe 10 out of every man, if you ask them who is the white material, the mm. first thing, trust me, maybe eight out of those ten would tell you Somebody she must know cook. how to cook. Somebody that can cook. Get a chef. It's, if you want someone that can cook, just employ a chef. Mm. Because I don't think that is the that is that's the entire role of a woman. I mean, yes, it's good if she can cook, great and fine. I'll eat I'll eat your delicacies. It's good but if you can cook too. I'm sorry, I mean who, who restricted that to just to one gender? At the end of the day, we need to begin to understand that cooking is a life-saving skill that yes. everyone should have. Whether you are a man, woman, um, what's the other gender? The other, oh, I saw why something based on coronavirus. They said, why is it just male and female that are testing to this virus? What happened to the other 45 genders that we've been <laughs> accepting? <laughs> Okay, let's move on to the next story. Alicia Keys reveals she considered aborting her second pregnancy as she credits her song More Than We Know for helping her decide against having an abortion. She wrote the song with her producer husband, Swiss Beat. Mm. I like that she's coming out to talk about this because um, sometimes we don't understand the struggle yeah, until we, we'll, we, we hear it from someone we all are idolize or some set of people idolize. So for her fans now, they understand that, okay, for an Alicia Keys to be going through this and considering this, because she said at the time her husband was going into Harvard Business School yeah. and she was also working on her album and she felt like it wasn't a good time. Even when time. she left her husband's office, she felt um, like a failure, she was torn and she really wanted to take out the pregnancy or she, she listened to that song and it reminded her that she can actually do it. So yes, I like that she shared that struggle. I like that she also shared um, the way she was able to come out of it because I, I tell people that songs, listening to music is one of the things that keeps me yeah. going. So I can stay in my house and be there all day. As long as I have music, I'm fine. And sometimes it helps me think and remember the things that I need to know. 
So yeah, I'm, I'm happy she's sharing this. Yeah, so um, basically, I think for me, what I got from this story is majorly that because a lot of people have been, there's still a debate of pro-choice, pro-life, mm -hmm. and all of that. A lot of people always think that when people say, oh, I want to get an abortion, it's because, oh, they got, you know, pregnant out of wedlock, they have. So it just shows you that there's a wide array of reasons why women decide to get, you know, abortions. And I'm glad that at the end of the day, she was able to, because the emphasis is on choice. Yeah. So whether she chose to abort it, whether she chose to keep it, at the end of the day, it's I'm glad that she had choice. the opportunity, you know, to even make that kind of choice in the first Space, which is what I hope people who are pro-life can understand. It's not we are not saying that oh, abortion is you know the moral way based on um, if you want to put it that way. But we are saying that people should have a choice. People should be able to choose. Oh, do I want to keep this baby or do I not want to keep this child? And I'm glad that at the end of the day she was able to you know truly she had an option and she was able to decide for herself that this is what I want to do. So from our story, I, I felt like yeah, it, it is motivational. You know, uh, I'm going to say this, but I'm pro-life, and as much as I'm pro-life, I, I don't negate and I don't discountenance the people who are pro-choice because there are situations in life sometimes you, you're not in that shoes, so you can't understand how that person is feeling psychologically, emotionally, and mentally. And I think being pregnant is a whole shade of different kind of emotions involved. You know, um, you can never tell where people are at a particular point in their life and something happened for them and they decide to make a choice. And so I don't, I don't think, I, don't, I think she's pro-life, but at this point, the choice had to be made. Mm. And, you know, against, against all odds, she still made a choice, you know, I'm going to have this baby. Um, and so that comes with to people who are out there who quickly are too judgmental. Like, okay, I, he, um, abortion, why would she consider an abortion? Blah, 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 this and this and that. You, you're never in the shoes that people wear. Different things, there, there are different reasons why people decide not to go through with a pregnancy. And not necessarily, again, at the end of the day, that that pregnancy um, has any health implications to them. Mm -hmm. It could just be their mental state of being at that point in time. They're not in a good place. I feel if I'm going to bring this baby into the world, I'm not going to be in a good place to take care of this baby. Mm -hmm. You know, many people argue, and that's not enough for you to abort a baby. For some people, that is a big deal. Because if my mental state of health is not going to be in the right frame, and I bring a child into this world, I'm going to affect that child. That means that there'll be a whole lot I'm trying to grapple with myself. Yes. Maybe there'll, there'll be resentment in myself, hate, and all of that you're passing on to that child. You know, so um, at the end of the day, I'm happy she, she made the decision on I mean, and, and, and kept to it. So whether you're pro-life, you're pro-choice, people should just learn to respect yeah, people's, people's decisions choices. regardless. Yeah. Okay, that's how I wrap up this episode of Tea Time. Thank you for watching. And remember, you can catch up on this conversation all over again by visiting our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. You can also watch Tea Time on Auto TV and in London on Ben Television. Thank you, as always, you go to my co-anchors, Benny Ark and Nimi Dekombi and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin, and do stay safe.